In this video, I'm going to show how to configure an MTR system to accept meetings from a WebEx system. So we start with the WebEx interface. What we have here is a web interface uh, where we can schedule a meeting. It's free to get a WebEx account and the free accounts can run meetings for, for example, 50 minutes. So we are going to use this account to create a meeting. I create it in my time zone. And I'll invite my email. So I'll start there. I can now see that I've already received the invite in my Outlook. And I can, if I want, just accept this invite. Uh, what's important is when I open the invite, it's the comments here. Uh, I'll just copy all the information here because this is what will be passed by the MTR solution or the exchange and the MTR together. So I'll use the comment here and I'll just create another meeting that I own. There are ways to do this with the same meeting, but I'll start with a new meeting. So I'll invite my demo room, demo four, and I'll just paste the information from the other meeting. I'm not creating a Teams meeting here, but just a ordinary meeting with the WebEx information in it. So I'll send the meeting here and I'll switch to the MTR system here and it will receive the meeting as we see here, but it still can't, it can't be connected to. There are a few things that we need to do before that's possible. The first thing is to go into the MTR system I'll maximize this and choose more and settings and the standard password for MTR system is SFB. I hope you've changed it. Uh, under meetings we have a new option here, Cisco WebEx. I enable this feature and that's really all we need to do here. Uh, we can if we want go to join with custom info then we can write another name for the meeting room or an other email address. But I'll stick with uh, the room information here. When I press save and exit, the MTR system will reboot. While the system reboots, we'll do some other settings that need to be done because just enabling the WebEx functionality isn't enough. What we also do need to do is we need to set some properties for the uh, room in uh, Office 365. There are some commands that we're going to run uh, to get this. Uh, so I'll right click the Windows flag in the bottom left corner and choose Windows PowerShell Admin. And yes, I will uh, paste these commands into the comments of the video when I post it. First, I need to tell it to be able to run these scripts. I will then enter the credentials for my Office 365 admin account. And then I will start the connection to Office 365. The important command here is this one. Set calendar processing, identify the room name. I will do this for each room I want to enable WebEx for. Then delete comments, false. 
I don't want to, it to delete the comments from a meeting invite. And delete subject false. I don't want it to remove the subject. That way we can see what the meeting is about in the room. There is a third option that I haven't pasted here that are in some guides. Process external meeting messages and to true. That means that external parties can uh, invite this room and I usually don't recommend this but it's possible to do. Now I'll run the command here and there we go. Uh, now I'll go back to my original meeting here and I'll just do some change here. I just add a space to send an update. And in the MTR system, I've got the uh, meeting now. So what we see is that we have the uh, color has been changed. It's uh, light blue right now. I can see that in the upper right corner of the light blue uh, rectangle, I have a WebEx icon and I can now join. I see, you can also see that the subject is demo meeting. If I want, I can now press join uh, to try and join this call. This will fail this time. It will say Cisco WebEx unexpectedly uh, ended the meeting. Try joining again. This is because uh, the host must start the meeting before it can be joined by the system. So we'll go back to the meeting in WebEx and we have our WebEx application here and I press start. I can start from either meeting here. Start the meeting and there we have and start meeting. Now we can go back to our MTR system and we can press the join button. I'll I'll switch to this view. I can now see the lower right is the uh, room with the WebEx and I now press join on the meeting. This time it will work. It will connect to the meeting and I'll see the meeting there. We have some new features that's normally not available. For example, in the MTR system, le lower left, we have show meeting on this device. If I press this, I would show the meeting on the in-room display. I probably don't want to do that. I can also leave the meeting and control some aspects of the meeting from my side. Uh, however, there are some limitations here. Uh, what we are doing is basically we are passing the uh, meeting, uh, the meeting information for the WebEx and uh, the MTR system looks for the link to a WebEx. If it finds this link, it presents us with the join button, which we used. When we press the join button, it will start a web uh, version of WebEx. And therein lies the uh, limitations. First, we only have a single screen in the web version of WebEx, so we will only be able to use one screen in a WebEx meeting on an MTR system. Uh, we uh, cannot use the HDMI grabber on the MTR. It's not supported to send the HDMI to the other end in the M MTR system through the WebEx uh, web client here. And we will not be able to use the chat function. There are a lot more uh, functions and features we can work with and change. There's one more important thing to mention, and that is if we use a Office 365 E5 license that include an ATP license, we must make sure it will not filter or rewrite the WebEx URL, URLs for the meetings. So we will have to uh, tell the ATP to uh, whitelist the webex.com addresses. So that's all for now. Uh, 